Welcome to the Model Railroad Back Shop with your host, Roger Kujawa. Roger Reviews, Iowa Scaled Engineering's New Interlocking in a Box. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Model Railroad Back Shop. I'm your host, Roger Kujawa. We're on location in Burlington, Wisconsin on my Atlantic Great Western. Uh, Burlington, Wisconsin is typical of a lot of Midwestern railroads uh, or cities. There's a main line that runs through and there's another railroad that crosses and at this town to cross i have my atlantic great western next to the tower and then the sioux line has got some track equipment on there you can see to the right and the milwaukee road comes to the left now the interesting thing about these towers is that they would have alternating trains on the different lines at different frequencies and there was no really way to represent that on these dummy lines that really don't connect anything and more of a scenery. Uh, the track is more scenery than operational. So I was always wanting to figure out how I could simulate that. And luckily I met the guys from Iowa Scale Engineering down at the RPM meet in Collinsville. Now, if you've never been to an RPM meet, I would highly suggest it. You can actually talk to the manufacturers, see the new stuff coming out, and the models that people bring that are under construction and finished are just amazing. So to get back to the tower now, I have dummy signals up. I threw some in here. They don't do anything, though. I mean, I could light them up, but it would be, even if I had a switch on there, there was no real way to simulate the cross traffic. So Iowa Skilled Engineering came up with a system and I'll show it to you at the workbench, but uh, let's watch this train go by first. Well, we're back at the workbench, and I'm going to show you this Iowa Scale Engineering interlocking in a box. How easy this is to set up. There's no soldering involved, which is really cool. That's going to make it easy for a lot of people. So let's get started here. I've got some of it already hooked up, and I'll show you how easy it is. These are the Atlas signals right out of the box. They have an extension cord available for the wires, but basically they just plug right in. Make sure they're snug. The sensors, there's two sensors here. One would be out here, one would be here, and the third one is here. And here's what they look like. The sensor is at the very top. It would go in between the ties, or you could pull out a tie and stick it in so it represents part of the tie and it would be virtually invisible. So let me tape this up temporarily so you can see how this works. <clears throat> So this would be the far sensor, this would be the one in the diamond, and this would be the other approach sensor. And it's also plug and play. It goes right in here. Just have to make sure you get the correct side up. Plug it in. Okay, now we connect up the power. And the system should power right up. So you could saw the, I don't know if you saw that that quick, 
but I'll do it again. The signals uh, go from red to green to show that the system is activated. Here it is again. So the system is activated, power supply is on. So what happens is the train comes up here, it sees the first sensor, the signal goes green for the train, it hits this middle sensor which tells the, the uh, system that the train is in the block, and then it goes to the third one and then clears up the system. So and then when you have a train coming the other direction, the same thing happens. The system triggers, tells it's in the block, and then it comes out the other end. Now what's really cool about this system is that there's switches here. You can tell the system to delay that signal randomly or every time. So when the train comes up, even though it triggers the sensor, there's going to be an internal timer in the, in the uh, control box and it may delay at 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. You can set that or you can make it random. So sometimes it'll trigger and other times it won't to simulate a train on the crossing track. So this is going to be really cool. I can't wait. I'm going to have three places on my layout where I can use this. To, to simulate trains crossing and uh, let's get back to the layout and I'll show you how to install this. So the hardest part of this project I think is actually going to be getting ready for it. The way my house was built, this, the concrete comes out to just behind this and then there's a shelf and then the rest of the house goes up. So I had to take the fascia off my layout to do this. So let's get started on the actual installation. So the first thing I did was I drilled a pilot hole in the middle of the diamond. And then I drilled a big hole, just a little bit bigger than the sensor. And once that was done, I pulled out this roto zip and went in the hole and got it as clean as I could. All the splinters are gone and the homosote and the cork so that the sensor can just slide right in without any problem. I put some tape on the sensor and what I'm going to do is I got it snug. I'm going to take a little bit of this E60 silicone, put it on here, and then as I pull it back down in, the sensor will be flush with the center of the diamond. The tape will protect the components from the silicone, and if for some reason I would ever have to pull it out, that silicone is not very tough and it will it's just a matter of just holding it so it doesn't fall down as the you know as the tape might dry out so I'm just gonna put a little tiny dab on there and that'll hold it as I pull it down and get it right in the right spot And once that silicone dries, it'll still be removable, but it'll hold it when that tape, that's uh, if the tape dries out or the wood moves or dries out in the winter time or whatever, it'll hold it in spot. I installed the other sensors six feet apart. That's about how much uh, cable they give you. You could uh, put it out farther if you wanted to get an extension cable. But they went in just like the one here. There was no difference. I temporarily mounted the control box on the side of my fascia so I could play with the delays, which are on this side. And I 
grab this old piece of plastic box I'm gonna put over the front while we have an operating session this weekend and I can try it out and then uh, once I figure out what I want to do I might mount it into the fascia and put a little cover plate over it so I can get to the the uh, delay features here without having to just have it dangling or jam it up underneath the fascia and something happened to it. I installed the signals. It's very similar to the uh, sensors. I drilled a hole, dropped the wires down, plugged them in. I put two spikes in the signal to hold it where it is and then added a little ballast. So that's the one end and then here is the other end. Again, the sensor is in the diamond that turns the signals red. And I'll set up a couple trains and show you how this works. I set up a random delay on the control box. So I will give you a toot on the horn when the locomotive goes past the sensor. We can see it if how much delay there is. Here comes the other local, and uh, I'll give you another toot on the horn to let you know that uh, he's right at the sensor, and we'll see what the delay is. Well, I can't say enough about these guys. I give them five stars. This thing works just like it's supposed to. Plug and play, no soldering required. You can't beat it. I mean, there's nothing like getting something out of the box and it just works. I give Iowa Scaled Engineering's five stars. Interlocking in a box. I'm ordering two more. Here's my other crossing in Geneva, Illinois. We crossed this Chicago Northwestern double track main line here. It's, they're quite busy, so I would imagine there's gonna be a lot of delays set up in this section for their commuter traffic and main line connection to the Union Pacific. Now I talked to the guys at Iowa Skilled Engineering and they said you can use a sensor or you can also use a push button. So this is the main line. I think I'll put the sensor in probably back about six feet or so. And then for anybody that pulls up on the siding or out of this industry track, I'll have a push button. So once they line their switches, they can push the button and get the signal. Now I'm gonna probably have to put the signal up here somewhere, maybe even a signal bridge or something um, so that they're all governed, all these three tracks are governed by the one signal. 
This is Elgin, Illinois. I crossed the Chicago Northwestern and Milwaukee Road in this town. And this may also get a push button for the industry track and the siding and to maybe put the sensor on the main line. On this end of it, I'm just going to put the sensor out here by the farm somewhere to uh, click the uh, signals on. Here's another possible application for this system. Um, at the end of Aurora here, I have a main line and a passing siding, and it's quite a ways single track around this peninsula to Bolingbrook, where it goes back to multiple tracks. So you may be able to use this system with a signal at each end with a push button to determine whether there's somebody coming at you without having to walk all the way around the peninsula to look when you don't have a dispatcher. Big shout out to the guys at Iowa Scaled Engineering for allowing me to test out the prototype of their interlocking in a box. I'm definitely going to get a couple more of these. Uh, please check out my other videos, The Atlantic Great Western, on YouTube and Facebook, and my Model Railroad Backshop videos on YouTube and Facebook. I'll put some links to the interlocking in a box and Iowa Skilled Engineering's websites in the description. Thanks again for watching.